What if one of the Baltic Sea's most problematic pollutants could be turned into an economic resource, in the process helping to strengthen Europe's food security for decades to come? Phosphorus, a chemical element that is essential for all life on Earth. Without it, plants and animals cannot grow. Phosphorus has enabled the green revolution in agriculture and underpins our global food security. Without it, modern farming is impossible. But it is a finite resource. The EU imports over 90% of the phosphorus it uses in agriculture, and only a small part of it gets recycled. Phosphorus is not just a resource question. Phosphorus washing into the sea, in urban and industrial wastewater, or running off from fields and farms, is one of the biggest causes of eutrophication, a problem that has devastated the ecosystems of the Baltic Sea for decades. The extra phosphorus causes aquatic plants, especially algae, to overgrow, so much so that they choke the life around them until, in the worst cases, the seabed that should be rich with fish becomes a desert starved of sunlight, oxygen, and life, as is the case in the Baltic Sea. But it doesn't have to be that way. The status of the Baltic Sea when it comes to eutrophication is actually, on the one hand, uh, quite improving. So we can see that nutrient runoff from land and from uh, our different sewage treatment plants has been reducing significantly since the 1950s. But on the other hand, we also have a lot of old sins. We have a lot of nutrients, in particular phosphorus, in the sediments that have been released there since past use. And we also see a lot of nutrients in the open water body. So in, in Sweden, when it comes to, to generating or creating policy mechanisms for reducing the impacts of defecation, we work on, 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 on several levels. On the one hand, we need to have a, a functioning food system. We need to create opportunities to grow food and that has an impact on the environment. So in that area, we need to find measures how to have agriculture while reducing the load of nutrients into agriculture production. And we also need to find measures to reduce the impacts, that is, take out nutrients from agriculture lands. And we are working on both of these aspects at the moment. The Bonus Return Project is exploring ways to recycle the phosphorus found in wastewater as well as agricultural wastes putting it back into the economy instead of letting it harm the Baltic. The good news is that there are plenty of solutions out there. Now it's up to governments, businesses and investors to make sure they get scaled up, transforming our phosphorus waste into a sustainable resource. My name is Tomasz Okruszko. I am professor in hydrology at the Warsaw University of Life Sciences. Now we use the models to see the future as we cannot make the changes in the catchment in reality. We cannot imply the ecotechnologies or human behavior. So we have to simulate that. We work with the models to see the future fate of nutrients under different scenario or variants of technology we use. My name is Sirka Tattari. I work in the Finnish Environment Institute as a hydrologist. In the Vantanjoki River, we are applying a catchment scale model and we are modeling nutrient loading and not only nutrient loading, but also the efficiency of different ecotechnologies. We are happy with the modeling results. In Vantanjoki River Basin, we have very good data. This new online water quality instrument gives us 24 measurements per day, while the old one gave only 20 measurements per year. We are focusing on two issues in Slupia catchment. One is sludge management, especially how the sludge can improve the soil structure and improve the nutrient balance. On second hand, we are checking also the agriculture land use changes, adaptation procedure, which lead to smaller outflow of nutrients to bulk. Well. 
Sulupia River catchment is a representative for the small tributaries of the Southern Baltic, so it means that the results obtained in the project, in the case study region, we can apply to other rivers which are in the south of Baltic. Nazywam się Andrzej Wójtowicz, jestem prezesem zarządu w firmie Wodociągi Słupsk. Na oczyszczalni ścieków produkujemy nawóz na bazie osadów ściekowych, dokładając wszelkiej starości do tego, żeby odbiorcy naszego finalnego produktu byli usatysfakcjonowani. Najważniejszym elementem w nowym prawie Unii Europejskiej, które może być implementowane też lokalnie, to jest przede wszystkim regulacje na, na, podsta na, na etapie tak zwanego end of waste, czyli utraty końca życia odpadu. E, w momencie, kiedy zajmujemy się odpadami i produkujemy z nich nawozy, powinniśmy mieć odpowiednią ścieżkę dostępu do rynku e, nawozowego. My name is Jon Wessling and I work uh, with water and environmental issues with the Federation of Swedish Farmers. We recommend farmers today to use certified sludge and uh, I think we would be uh, able to recommend them to use these uh, recycled nut nutrients also uh, if they are safe and uh, the nutrients are available and that they have a good quality. Uh, but in the end it's the choice of the farmer uh, what they use on their farm. Uh, but on the whole, this is a very important question, actually, to increase the recycling of nutrients for both nitrogen and phosphorus, uh, since only a third of the sludge that is produced is act actually spread on arable land. The phosphorus fertilizer used in Sweden is already much lower in cadmium. With the new EU fertilizer regulations, this clean phosphorus will probably become more expensive, uh, but there will also be a larger market for innovative solutions. My name is Sten Stenbeck. I'm a senior project leader at the Research Institute of Sweden. New innovative uh, solutions have major challenges in the last steps to reach the market. They almost always need a proof of concept, a demonstration project, either uh, with a potential client through an innovation procurement or with a third-party test institute that can uh, verify, validate and even certify the product. The Bonus Return project organized an innovation competition inviting new innovative solutions that have the potential to capture nutrients from the Baltic Sea region, but they are still not in the market. Um, the three solutions selected were Ravita from Finland, Biofree from the Netherlands and Terra Nova from Germany. The award included support to bring the solutions closer to market. Aquacare's product Biofree needed a demonstration for removal and capturing of phosphorus from uh, waters or sludge. We are testing their solution at a test bed in Knivsta, Sweden. My name is Prashant Suresh Kumar and I'm a researcher at Aquacare. Aquacare's Biofree technology addresses the problem of harmful algal blooms in the Baltic Sea. We do this by reducing phosphorus to very low concentrations from dilute streams. We have a very compact and modular unit and we can remove and recover both soluble phosphorus and phosphorus that's in the form of particles. For us to succeed in the market, we first need a market that understands what we exactly offer. Currently there are technologies that recover phosphorus from very concentrated streams. We are not competing with those technologies. 
We are working with very dilute streams, and our primary drive is to combat eutrophication. Our pilot in Knista is connected to a discharge from a wastewater plant. This is an example of a point source from which phosphorus can be discharged into surface waters. By having our test bed there, we can test out what are the bottlenecks involved in such realistic conditions. And by understanding this, we can target multiple point sources, and this will ultimately help in preventing harmful algal blooms from the Baltic Sea. Ravita needed a better market analysis of their solution and is currently setting up uh, a demonstration plant in Finland. My name is Laura Rossi and I work as a project engineer in the Ravita project. So Ravita is a nutrient recovery process where we can recover the phosphorus directly from wastewater and then uh, nitrogen from the rigid waters. From this process, we can recover the phosphorus as phosphoric acid and then nitrogen as ammonium phosphate. Uh, these products can be then used in fertilizing industry or in other industrial uses. Ravita process can be applied to different kinds of wastewater treatment plants. It's easily scalable and it has high phosphorus recovery rate. Crucial for us is to have communication with the end users of the process and the product, so wastewater treatment plants and fertilizing industry, so that we are able to increase our uh, technical readiness level and also that we know what are the requirements for the products. Terranova needed support to compare their performance to other more established technologies. It will also be tested in a test bed in Gävle, Sweden. My name is Malte Lillusråle from Norsjöns Stamförening Aktiebolag and we are representing Terranova Energy in Sweden. Terranova technology has the best energy efficiency as it consumes 80% less energy than conventional drying methods. It also boasts the production of biogas with about 15 to 20 percent and converts the sludge into renewable biochar that can be used as fertilizer. Terranova technology also recovers nitrogen and phosphates and that is also valuable fertilizers. These factors combined makes Terranova technology unique in the market. Regulatory framework in Sweden for handling on municipal and industrial sludge is changing rapidly and that opens up opportunities for new technologies. Uppsala was one of the first cities in Sweden with a centralized sewage system established as early as 1945. The question today is how to make the best use of sludge while preventing toxic substances from reaching land and water bodies. My name is Mats Johansson. I'm a consultant in water and wastewater treatment at Ecoloop. A legislation with a ban on the use of sludge will lead to big changes in the Swedish wastewater sector. If there's a high recovery rate for phosphorus and a short implementation time, we will see an example similar to the one in Germany, where they go for incineration of the sludge and the extraction of phosphorus from the ash. On the other hand, a scenario with an implementation drawn out over time and with the recovery targets for example also nitrogen, this will lead to uh, new circular solutions like the one Ravita is developing in Finland. The outcome of the Swedish investigation will send important signals for cities, innovators and farmers on how to make policies and investments for the future recovery of resources from sludge. Reaching a decision will be crucial for the wastewater treatment plant in Uppsala, which is in the process of planning for large investments to accommodate the needs of a growing population in the city. 
I believe that the larger municipalities will contract private actors to solve their problems. And I believe that the smaller municipalities will follow the larger in their organization and their technology, even if that leads to additional costs. We will also see new technologies such as uh, thermal treatments, uh, charring, drying of sludge, and of course incineration. When we work in decentralized settings, it gives us the opportunity to bridge the gap between the innovative ideas and the scaling up of solutions. And this will lead to new technology and in the future, we may see more off-grid solutions for water and wastewater treatments in our future cities. Local actors in our workshops have pointed out that eco-technologies do not have to be high-tech. Good farming practices already exist, and if they are properly targeted, uh, they can capture nitrogen, phosphorus and also carbon for reuse on croplands, thus also minimizing the losses to receiving waters. In Sweden we have come a long way uh, when it comes to the use of animal manure, but there is still room for better efficiency. But on the other hand, we have goals of increased food production, so we really have no choice but to increase recycling of nutrients. And the sooner the better. In Sweden, when it comes to working on eutrophication issues, we see that working in a collaborative approach is very important because we have many agencies involved addressing eutrophication issues. The other aspect of, of, of creating a sustainable uh, uh, way of working to address eutrophication is to have financing available. And that could be through tax subsidies, which we do currently, but also through market-based mechanisms. At the EU level, we work according to the principles of the blue growth, which are, are two key principles. On the one hand, it is to, it's about restoring the environment, and in this case, then restoring the impacts of, of overload of nutrients. On the other hand, working on creating incentives for market-based uh, mechanisms to generate opportunities to take up nutrients from, from the environment. Circular solutions need to be efficient, politically feasible and acceptable to users. And there are still major obstacles to closing the loop on nutrient recycling. But looking ahead, new EU rules are likely to level the playing field between conventional and waste-derived fertilizers and improve market opportunities for recovered nutrients.